love you, man. We're live, and we're just saying how much we love this Michael guy Aww. up in the corner here. Um, seriously, uh, we were just I, – I was going on more of a rant off screen, but it was more about – uh, the people that put in their hard work and their talents um, in the community and when it comes to creation, writing, um, all those types of things. It's like, it's work and pay your people. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. So um, on that note, always follow us, always subscribe to our stuff, click the buttons and all that stuff because it does help us get the word out there and it does help us get some traction, um, especially for this amazing storyteller that we'll get right into it because this is still series four but i'm gonna give this right over to michael because we need to get into some gameplay so check out root i'll be throwing some links into the twitch um chat so you can find out what system we're using but it's all on you now michael okay hello and welcome to the dark forest the epic woodland fantasy that takes you on a wild journey of animal adventure one clearing at a time this is episode two of our big city animals arc episode entitled cats and bird killers uh we'll meet some of those characters are they killers no but they do have a killer scent well yes yeah, they are actually they kill a lot i was gonna say some of them some of them do kill a lot they do have a killer they all have a killer sense of style though Let's go ahead and meet them, and then I'll do a real, qu a real quick uh, recap and intro, and we'll get right into it. Um, oh, but I should say, Scooter, that wasn't a rant. That or, it was a good, uh, it was a good speech. Yeah, not not a rant at all. Um, or a good, I mean, a good rant. I don't know. Rant is kind of a negative connotation. That was good. All right, let's go ahead and meet our characters, our players. Please tell me uh, who you are, who you're playing, and how they're feeling as everybody uh, gets ready for the biggest party in uh, in Katzenberg history, starting with Katz. Oh, Dip, I'm not usually the first one. Uh, okay, hi. This how, uh, how the I'm Katz. Up this time. I'm sorry. He changed it up. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, uh, my name is Kat. I've said that 17 times now. I'll write it down on a piece of paper and hold it up in a second. Uh, and I am playing the Grand Duchess Yana Winterborn of the Winterborn Dominion. Um, for those of you that do know Russian history, Grand Duchess is a step above princess. So she is just really um, just letting it fly. Like she's she, she's uh, taking this opportunity of going to the ball to be like, yep, I'm the proper royalty of the Winterborn Dominion. Please help me take back my country. You very lovely rich people. Uh, so we're going to see how that goes. It's going to be a, a side of Yana um, that has not gotten much of a chance to come out yet. Uh, she does have a charm of three if you look at the stats. I don't know which way they really go. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at a totally different thing than the rest of you. I mean, she has a charm of plus three, and we don't usually get to see that very much. I'm I'm hoping to get to play that tonight. Mm, very cool. We are also joined by Patrick. Hello, I am Patrick. I am playing Kiva the Crow, a Arctic Hare, using the Scandrel playbook. Um, for this particular situation we find ourselves in, she's incredibly excited to be able to sneak in somewhere and not destroy anything or steal anything, <laughs> but find something. Wink. <laughs> I love it. Yes, your goal is not to steal, simply to observe. Also joining us is Nick. Well, hello there. Um, I am Nick, and once again, I am playing Finn Cardu, the raconteur bard extraordinaire. Um, yeah, he's just sort of, he gets to do what he does with flair this time. So <laughs> hopefully that'll be helpful. Oh, I cannot wait to see it. And then finally rounding us out, it is Marvin. Hey, I'm Marvin, and I'm going to be playing Seamus Opossum, who by his name is an opossum of the Raider playbook. Now, for tonight at the ball, Seamus is not really the type to go around sneaking about observing or charming people. So tonight, 
he's just going to enjoy the ball and look intimidating as he always does along with a certain Tasmanian devil mercenary ah of course Nan Nevers a uh, Tasmanian devil mercenary who perhaps has captured Seamus's heart he's actually kind of put on a nice suit tonight first time he's ever Ooh, done it very cool all right, we will see all of that in just a moment. Katzenberg, the grandest city of the Dark Forest, the free city, the place where fortunes are made and dreams come true. Right now, four very different creatures, exiled fox heir Yana Winterborn, songbird maestro Finn Cardu, renegade rabbit Kiva the Crow, and ex-partisan possum Seamus O'Possum, seek the dream of peace. They are working for Septimius von Stahl, a noble ferret of the Grand Sable Empire, who says that he is a means to end the war tearing apart the Dark Forest. The key is located in some clockwork invention, which is to be on display at a high society function called the Ringtail Ball. But the Ringtail Ball is no ordinary high society soiree. It is run by Tomash Nux, the raccoon crime lord who rules all of Katzenberg. The animals have all found a way in, not to steal the clockwork convention, but to observe it. Now, it's time to go to the ball. Well, it is almost time. Uh, we are going to start with a little bit of downtime for all the characters. You have about a day or so until the ringtail ball, which will occur in the evening. So there is a, a list of downtime activities that can be about increasing your wealth, buying uh, new weaponry or armor, upgrading your gear, seeking out some um, animal, as in non-sentient animal companions or pets or mounts, uh, fishing, gambling. There's quite a few options uh, that could increase your wealth or some of your power, provide some useful items for later on. Um, it is all up to you, and you can choose one of the options that I have sent to you. Let's go ahead and start with the Grand Duchess herself, Yana. Oh, okay. Uh, Yana's plan is to carouse in Amberling. Um, so she is carousing to meet contacts. Um, she is hoping to locate the, um, I keep reading the name of the owls. <laughs> like uh, Semyon. Yeah, Semyon, and he's part of... He is part of the Winterborn Dominion. He is a Silent Wing, is the... Uh, silent the Wing, that's what I was looking for. Yes, yeah. which are the uh, spies and the secret police of the Winterborn. Yes, so she's trying to carouse in that area to locate Simeon, if at all possible. Or Semyon, sorry. Simeon would be a monkey. Um, anyway... <laughs> Okay, go ahead and roll a charm, and for every coin you spend, you get a plus one to the roll. Sure. Um, I think I'm going to spend one value to, like, bump my charm, the, the roll, all the way up to a plus four. Nice. Which I, teeters on, meaning I can't fail. Teeters on. Let me roll okay. freaking snake eyes now. Now I've doomed myself. Well, we'll see. You can roll snake eyes. I didn't roll well, but I didn't roll okay. snake eyes. With my plus four, I've got an eight. An eight. Okay, that's good. That's a partial success. Um, the good news is you, or the bad news is you don't meet Sammy in, but you do meet another uh, Winterborn character who perhaps could be useful to you. You meet little, uh, little Petrov, the oh. uh, Ice Rider, who I believe you guys encountered leading his Ice Rider band of... Uh, warrior arctic hares at the beginning of our story yes and if i'm right about little petrov he's the one that i have as a a loyal friend and i rolled very high yes that is correct yeah okay um so you are you're like just kind of wandering through some of the upscale like wine bars of um of amber lane this is like the most you know elite neighborhood in katzenberg um this is where the wealthy live. So there's lots of like mansions. If there are restaurants, or the kind that you gotta like book, you know, a month in advance, and um, you know, gold leaf everywhere. So you are in this like fancy, you know, exclusive wine tasting area. Um, there's sommelier animals like sniffing stuff out and pouring things. 
And after, you know, asking around, partying it up, drinking a little bit, um, you find yourself next to little uh, little Petrov, who's looking out of place. He is this, um, despite, he's, he's little because he is the younger Petrov. He is actually huge. Um, he's like this giant kind of obese rabbit, uh, ears like flicked back in a rakish way, huge mustache of whiskers, wearing just like this, you know, blue turquoise robes, uh, rakish sash around his waist with his big saber thrust in he's sitting there trying his best to get drunk on like fancy wine and uh, it's not quite working uh but when he spots you he you know he lights up his ears perk up oh this will fancy finding you here fancy finding you here as well i did not know you'd made it down to katzenberg that also would indicate the army perhaps is closer or did you uh defect Oh, no, I am, um, never would I, can I, uh, I mean, as you know, I cannot betray, uh, my, my nation. I'm just part of the, um, security force for the Winterborn delegation. And he looks very guilty, and he says, you know, the, uh, the Baron is here, and I have to protect him, even though Katzenberg is neutral ground for the war. Well, as long as the Baron does not start a fight with me, I do not plan to start a fight with him this evening. No, very Tell good. me, I have been uh, assembling a bit of a squad of wolves lately. Mm. How goes it in the territory as far as... Do I have any loyalists, Petrov? Um, he thinks about it. He says, there are many displeased with your aunt, Yekaterina. Many because they do not like this war. It's costing much blood, much treasure. And others, as you know, our empire is made up of many other peoples that uh, have been conquered, like the Iron Fang Wolves. They're always eager for their freedom. So they there are rumors of you, but so far... Nobody is uh, flying your banner openly. It would be suicide if they did, of course, but perhaps the feelings are there. It is uh, hard to say. I've been assembling some of the Iron Fang wolves, and I do plan on making them equals in the nation rather than subservient to the nation. He thinks about it, and he's, or he says, hmm. That would grant you some supporters in the Iron Fang Mountains, but the boyars, there are many who would not like that. I understand that the boyars would not like that, but amongst the, which, I'm sorry, which ones are the boyars really quickly? <laughs> oh, the bo- boyar is like the Russian word for noble. So yeah, it's like the, the, the noble, um, you know, the, like the, the, the aristocracy of the Winterborn. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially those, you know, because in the Winterborn Dominion, like the white furred animals are often the ones that are uh, in power and have right. that, like, you know, that ancestry. Um, yeah, they were not like a bunch of wolves uh, from, like, you know, some province in the south that was conquered suddenly becoming equal. I understand that the boyars would dislike it. I'm not asking for anything as revolutionary as freeing the serfs. I am simply wishing to make the wolves happier than they currently are. But the boyars I will talk to once I've taken the throne. Uh, I will... I plan to do it in such a way, Petro, that... uh, Petro, that they do not... um, will not have the courage to form an open revolution. Um... He's like... Well... I think that... When it does happen, I speak for the Ice Riders. There is much about Yekaterina we don't like, but to declare openly for you, ah, uh, little Yana, it would, it would jeopardize much that we have fought for. I unfortunately do not have my advisor or possum with me. He is a much wiser person about battles than I am. But I think if I could find a place in which to make a stand against 
forces that would not ever leave my aunt, then perhaps if I could win such a battle, it would make a point to those that are undecided. Hmm. Um, you know, Yana, give me a persuade roll. Okay. I believe that's yeah. charm, and I'm that supposed is, to be yeah. good at that. Just, uh, persuade an NPC. Yeah. Um, I have got 11. Ooh, incredible. Very good roll. Um, he's like, you can see he like, he considers your words and like nods. He's like, when that day comes, perhaps the Ice Riders will ride at your side. If I could have both the Ice Riders and the Wolves at my side, I believe that I could win any battle. Um, he's like, well, with the Ice Riders at your side, you can win any battle. <laughs> now, will you drink with me? Do you, will you drink to that? I will drink to the Ice Riders and to your continued health. All right. Yeah, he throws back another bottle of... Uh, you know, extremely expensive wine. The um, some like sommelier anteater just like looks shocked as that he's like just guzzling. You know, the most expensive uh, vintage that they got without even putting his nose in it and sniffing it first. Yeah, Jan is doing all the proper wine drinking thing just because. <laughs> you know. Yeah, little Petrov is not. I understand that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, she she doesn't want to necessarily make terrible impressions in this town if she can avoid it um sure what was the name of the town where she killed the bear <laughs> oh um that is am i thinking of i'm just blanking on it oh my god i have it written down was it geist no geist grove is where the cemetery was yes geist grove was the uh the holy site um this is the town of, where am I? Oh my god, Harrow Heath is the name of the place. Harrow Heath. Petrov. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something happened in the town of Harrow Heath that I think might mm -hmm. uh, add to my mythology. I killed their local god. Oh. That's, uh, that's quite a story. It is quite a story, and it can be backed up by several witnesses. Something like that getting spread back to the front, that the true Tsarina killed a god and ate its heart. That would be appreciated back in the Winterborn Dominion, I believe. He's like, well, I can spread the story along. That would be appreciated. Mm. Um, one more question, and then I want to let it move on to somebody else. Uh, Lady Olga is associated with the Bloody Baron, correct? Yes. Great. Um, she is, yeah, she's in the Bloody Baron's, like, uh, well, she, she was in the Bloody Baron's party, uh, mm -hmm. but she officially left and has pledged her fealty to you at this point. Yes. So uh, I think I, right now, did you bring her to Katzenberg or did you send her somewhere else? So I'm not, I don't know if we... Uh, I feel clarified. like we just kind of hand-waved it. I feel like she probably would have come to Katzenberg. Okay, then she's in Katzenberg with you. She has a place on the boat, the wise salmon. Right. Yeah, unless she had something else she had to do. I, I I feel like at that point in the game, we kind of were like, she's on your side, but we're running out of time, so. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, she, she's with you. Okay. Um, okay, so we got, uh, that takes care of Yana's downtime. Some good carousing, met a new ally. Yeah, she uh, probably, how much, by the way, does it cost to buy herself a ball gown? Is that like another value? Uh, I'm going to say two value for, like, a really nice ball gown. Okay, we're going to go to town still. She... <laughs> no, mother, I'm bad with money. Whatever, I still have three value. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and, uh, uh, let's let's talk about, um, speaking of a, a character who is good with money, um, because he won, I mean, not no, no shade on Yana, of course, but I'm just thinking about Kiva won, like, one big at the casino for his last downtime. So, what is Kiva doing for this downtime? Uh, well, not that, because she's flat out broke. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. Maybe not so good <laughs> with money there. Um, I, I think what she's going to do sounds a little, maybe a little lame. She's going to go fishing. Hey, that could be good. She's going to take the uh, the crow's nest with her. Teach him, teach him how to do it. Oh, man. Fishing field trip. Yeah. 
All right, so you and all of these uh, street urchin animals are just hanging out on, like, you know, sitting by the dock of the bay, uh, throwing down your lines into the water. And let's see what happens. So for uh, fishing, go ahead and roll with finesse. That's a 13, double fives. Whoa. Yeah, you just like, um, you know, you throw it, the other, the, uh, the, the other, um, the crows are getting like, you know, impatient. They're not so much into fishing, maybe. Anna's like throwing, you know, stones in the water, being bored. But you know that, you know, the patient fisherman is the, or fisher beast is the beast that is rewarded. And then pretty soon it starts to pull. You like reel it in, and you get this like beautiful catfish that is like huge, like as big as you. Um, with this brilliant catch, it's like it's good eating. So you got two options for it. You can sell it uh, to get five value, or you can uh, get it cut up into you know made into some delicious filet fish. And whenever you eat it, it'll restore to exhaustion. I'm gonna sell it. Oh, nice. You get five value. And as, as we're sort of wrapping up the um, bartering to get the, the money for the fish, like, I, and then I start turning to them. This is why patience is a very good thing to have, because you never know when you're going to strike big, get the opportunity, and run away with all the value you can. Anna's like, wise words. All right, so you earn some uh, money there. Five value earned. Uh, we'll see how, how wise you are with it, though. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> um, how about Finn? Um, I think... Yeah, why not? Let's, uh, let's see if I can recruit a performer or two in, from the Motley Maze. Oh, okay. So kind of adding someone to the uh, the mendicant merrymakers? Yes. Uh, your, your man, your troop? All right, go for it. Um, uh, so for this one, you're going to the Motley Maze. You're going to uh, roll your charm, and you can get a plus one for every value you spend. Um, hmm. You know what, just for the fun of it, I'm going to go all out for this person and spend three value. Oh my god. So with... Oh, yes. So you have had a chance to sleep be between this time and the last time. Yes. Yana sent me a quick message there. Yeah. The exhaustion gets cleared there. Um, yeah. Finn, go ahead and roll with a plus three as well as your ordinary charm. Okay. Well, that's a good get. thing I did. Not mm -hmm. the best roll. Uh with the pluses that I have, it's an 11. An 11. Okay, it's pretty good. so much better. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, you already have Nicholas Ratcage, at least for this performance, right. with your group. Um, right now, uh, I am going to say you get a a like special effects uh, makeup artist. Ooh. Um, named uh, Tom Servolini. He's a serval. Um, and he is an expert in making the most like, you know, uh, Grand Guinal, like, you know, gore, um, crazy costumes like you know when, when he's got when his when his when his troops when his uh special effects are in play you, you believe you best believe there's going to be like severed heads flying around swords going into stuff uh there could be a splash zone for the front part of the audience Ooh. maybe maybe leave the children at home when these moments <laughs> play. but it just adds you know such an amazing uh tactile sense of practical effects to any performance that really make them sing so Tom Cervellini comes over and is like, um, so you, uh, I hear you're looking for some, some special effects, add a little pizzazz to your shows. Yes, actually, uh, 
that'll be amazing. I've have I actually heard of this 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 fellow? Uh, oh, I would say so. I mean, he's not. You haven't like seen him. He doesn't. I mean, sometimes he sometimes he acts, which is always a treat. You mm-hmm. know, a fun cameo. Um, right. Or maybe perhaps more. But but he's more known. Like you've definitely seen his work in like quite mm-hmm. a few uh, very very gory um, performances that you've seen. Right. Ah, well, I have heard that your your work is quite quite divine and. Well, I say divine, but... It... Yeah, I get it. <laughs> but, uh, yes, um, I'm a, the uh, one of the heads of a troop known as the Mendicant Merrymakers. Merrymakers, sorry. Um, and we are... We could definitely use your talents for our performances if we have... So... And we are actually performing at the ball tonight, so... Ah, okay. Um... How do you feel about uh, revenants? You know, the living dead, zombies. Hmm. I don't know how how it would go in a ball, but uh, it could be a very interesting show. Very avant garde. Ooh, I, I think I like it. Yeah. All right. I'll see hmm. what I can do. Yes. Oh, we do have uh, Nicholas Ratcage on our group as well. For oh, so. I love him. Yeah. I mean, hey, that guy. Phenomenal. Uh, mummer, just unbelievable. Every performance, quite so, quite so. Yeah, love working. I've um, I don't know if I've ever worked with him before, but like, very much looking forward to it. Yes, well, I look forward to seeing your work in action. All right, well, I'm uh, happy to be part of the troop. Yeah. All right, so you can add that uh, Tom Serval Alini has now joined you. All righty, okay. Um, so that uh. Let's move on to Seamus. What would Seamus like to do for his downtime? Well, he spent the last downtime recruiting. Got 12 squirrels to join the Green Wardens. Crit again? Nah. I'm going to go with what I wanted to do yesterday. Visit an old friend. Yes, me. And hopefully mm. get some gear upgraded. Nice. All right, so you head over to. Let me make sure I'm getting the uh, title location uh, location right. In the Motley Maze, you go to the fabulous Forge of Madame Fox, which is uh, where some of you might be staying. And uh, this is the Smithy of Yasmine Fox. She's got. Um, she of course remembers you, Seamus, and she is like, "Oh, Seamus, please come in. Welcome." Yes, oh, I'm thinking back to those old times, just seeing you. And I was uh, young and spry enough to travel around the woods, but you're still doing it yourself. It's taken its toll. Mm. Oh, it will. If I keep doing this for a couple more years. But nah, still got a mission to do. I'm rebuilding well. them, yes, me. Rebuilding the wardens, finally. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Well, please, come in. Let's see, uh, maybe there's some of the new toys that I've built or found that you could, you could use for the Green Wardens. And she starts, you know, showing you and introducing all of these cool new uh, weapons and armor uh, that she has for sale. Or she could upgrade what you have. So if you can look at the list here, is there anything that's uh, catching your fancy? Nice. Of this one in particular. Ah, that shield. Ooh. Actually, it looks rather kingly, if you ask me. Uh, she's like, oh, this, the king of kite shields. So, what is this like, this beautiful kite shield? Um, and it is like, you know, most kite shields are just, you know, simple wood. They're meant to, uh, you know, catch some blows. So they'll probably break after a little while. Like, they're not meant to be long lasting shields. This guy, it's made of, like, the heaviest wood, reinforced with metal and nails. It's even got a little bit of, um, you know, some fancy filigree around the center. This is the king of kite shields. This thing will take a licking and keep on kicking, for sure. Um, you can use, you can always use the parry move, once you have it. Mm-hmm. And you can use might instead of finesse for the parry ability. Nice. Also, it's arrow-proof and thick. So she, like, you know, um, picks up this shield, 
a little bit heavy for her arms. She slams it down the counter, gives it a tap, and says, The king of kite shields, Seamus. Usually, this would be uh, three. Special friend of, y of Yasmin gets the special rate. Two value for the shield. All right. I'll take it. Stunning two out of my nine. It's yours. And you get to, like, you know, work your hands into it and you haul up this uh, this mighty shield. If Seamus is just going to bring out his axe and see, hmm, I'm going to use this while using this. Huh. Seems like it'll work. It's exactly what it is in, like, the picture for the raider. See this guy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. You got the shield in one hand, the big battle axe in the other. Perfect. Okay. By the way, Yasmin, would you be able to repair my armor by any chance? It's taking the beating out there. Um, she says, we're one value, I'll fix it up. Right. And I still have six in that golden statue. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, you can spend that any time. You know, in the city, easy to find a buyer. Hmm. What else does she have? Uh, she's got a few other weapons. And she probably do, if you want to, like, if there's something you're interested in her building, she could you could like commission something that'd be ready next next game. She's got um, the big time belly bow, which is like a, a, a gastrophiti, is like a, a special kind of invented uh, bow that you kind of have to you like lean down, put your belly into it, and you pull up. It's, it's like this huge crossbow looking thing. You pull up the string, you can fire like a giant arrow. Probably uh, not she, something for Seamus, but maybe somebody else could use it. Use it uh, if I buy yeah, it from maybe them. like a ranged. It could be a really powerful long-range weapon. Um, saboteurs, sabatons, are like these special armored shoes that are made so well they actually don't make noise. So they're good. Like they provide armor and they're stealthy. <laughs> and the uh, sneaky sleeve stilettos are little daggers you can hide in any sleeve. Perfect for you know if you had a. Uh, go somewhere where you can't like wear weapons. You could easily hide a whole bunch of those on you. Hmm. Any of those calling your name, or is there something you would like to commission? Actually, yeah, I think it'd be better to commission something. I got a bunch of squirrel mercenaries that I recruited for the wardens. They're good lads and lasses, one and all. But I need them to move places that I can't. But you may be able to commission some sort of grapple gear, like standard issue for a lot of them. Ooh, she's like, hmm. You can see like the, the the gear is turning in her head. She's like, complicated invention, but I can do it. Right. Give me three value. Set this whole thing up. I will make enough to outfit all of them. All right. Also sounds good. And now I'm down to three value in total. Okay, let me just mark this down. Uh, yeah, Seamus was rich. Well, I mean, you, it was money well spent. Grapple gear for the Squirrel Foresters. Right. How soon can you get it done, Yasmin? If you don't mind. Uh, she's like, probably tomorrow. Same time tomorrow. I work fast for you, Seamus. Hey, thanks, old friend. And don't you worry. I'll keep your daughter safe as always. Oh, Seamus. I know you would. Okay, so with that, it's time to uh, go to the ball. You guys all kind of go your separate ways. Uh, the Grand Duchess, Yana, like, you know, heads up to the front. It's the evening now. You go to the Ringtail Casino. And, uh, Yana, you present your ticket and go in. Everybody else yeah. is kind of just... Oh, Yana? Um, I did have a question as to whether or not she can get the diadem from her mother before she goes to this. And her sword. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the sword... You're going as a guest, so you are allowed to bring it in and wear it. Just not, you know, use it. It's, you know, ceremonial only. Right. It's, it's an important symbolism, the sword. Yes, you are allowed to bring your sword in. Um, the diadem... That's if her mother gives it to her. 
Yeah, I do not know if your mother feels willing to give it to you yet. She's still unsure about this dangerous, bloody task you've set yourself to. Oh, mother, it will be much less dangerous and much less bloody if I have the diadem for the ball. Uh, she's like, not so. Your father, he wore that crown, and you know what happened to him. Yeah. Understand. But still, nobody should be harming me at this ball. The only thing that I'm degrading at this ball is getting allies, allies with money. Um, she's like, Yana, you have so much to learn. When you put that crown on, you become a target. Whether or not your enemies smile to you at a bar, at a ball or not, they still hold the daggers behind their back. I don't know if I want to put that target on you, if I could live with myself if I did that. Um, Give me a persuade. Okay. Yeah, with the charm. She's, she's still not quite there. Sure. That is an 11 again. Okay. Um, She says... Mother, I am already a target. All you're doing is denying me the legitimacy. Removing none of the danger. She's like, well, you're going to this ball anyway. And you're calling yourself Grand Duchess. I suppose because it you is might... my title. Mm. I suppose you might as well look the part. And okay. she has like the crown. Um, it's like, you know, in a cupboard, like under the, like by the stove, just like the most you know, out of the way, disrespect, disrespectful place you could find it. She just, you know, hauls it out, dusts it off, and, like, tosses it to you. Okay. Uh, so, yes, you have the crown. We're kind of cutting ahead to the ball. You're walking yep, in the diadem and the sword. Diadem's right there over your ears. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of you guys, uh, Kiva, Finn, Seamus, you're all heading in kind of out the back way through, like, you know, the service entrance as... The mendicant merrymakers, Nicholas Ratcage and Tom Servellini, Grimaldi, and the rest of the troop are being like ushered in by the guards. And um, you are like let in when the ball's kind of already sort of in full swing. You're gonna like, uh, you know, sort of tag out the other uh, entertainment that's already there. So, you, oh, uh, go ahead, Seamus. Yeah, is then the Tasmanian devil there as well? Um, you know, as you go in, you do spot her. She actually was able to get a ticket. Okay. She is oh. wearing like, you know, just a formal, um, you know, she's not she's not wearing a gown. She's wearing like, you know, formal trousers and um, a surcoat. No, no armor. Um, and she just has like her long sword like on her back, but with no shield. So uh, a little a little bit, you know, less than her full uh, warrior appearance. Um, and she has even, like, combed her, like, dark, wild, spiky hair. Hey, well, Diva, Ben, if you excuse me. And don't worry, I'll keep a lookout out for what we're looking for. Okay. I'm gonna slip away from the group and try to find it. And I can <laughs> look for it. <laughs> yeah, it's more of your job. You're better at sneaking around than I am by any chance. Fend. But you're good for distractions. That was my job. I mean, <laughs> it was Fend's job. Distractions doesn't like you know, duh, hitting somebody with a head distraction. <laughs> <laughs> Finn well, is good at this. Is is drawing attention to himself in the entire room. Yes. Yes. Then then I bail him out when he gets someone trying to kill him. That's how it works. Well, you bail me out, don't... partner. I'll bail you. Don't worry. We got this. <laughs> don't worry, Yana's going to be talking up the nobles here and getting help, help for, uh, for taking back the throne and everything. We got this. Right. Don't worry. <laughs> right. And I'm actually going to try and use plan of attack. Oh, nice. For everyone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and roll yeah. some. Yeah. Could be useful. Yana, you can, of course, use these pluses as well. Yeah. It's for Yana as well. Three. And a six. And plan of attack is with might, so nine plus three, twelve. Nice. So I hold how, much, three. How, much, uh, how many points is that? 
I just hold three, and I can use them for any one of these. Very cool. Okay, so everybody's kind of spreading out. Um, the Ringtail Casino, like all of the um, all of the uh, the gaming equipment has been moved to the side. It's just been like totally decorated, turned to this like fantastic ballroom. There's tables just like heaped with oysters, expensive drinks, fine cheeses. Um, there was like a band of uh, fiddling mice from the city's rat hole that sort of, uh, you know, finish up, take their bows as your troop moves in. And Nicholas Ratcage starts doing like the bloody zombie pirate uh, monologue for the, the new show that the Mendicants have been working on, getting everyone interests. Uh, you see lots of guests from like all over Katzenberg. There's visiting dignitaries, there's nobles, there's uh, wealthy bankers from the uh, the Gilded Guild, the, the organization of bankers, as well as more crimey, grimy kind of characters, you know, from the underworld who've been brought up here. And of course, uh, foreign visitors from like both armies. So everybody's kind of, you know, moving around, talking as the, as the performance is going on. Um, you do see, looking above everything up in the balcony, is Tomasz Nux himself, this somberly dressed raccoon dressed all in black big white ruff only bit of um kind of uh paleness amongst his garments little bit of little spectacles like perch on the end of his nose he's just kind of has you know his arms in the balcony watching everything next to him is artemisia de leon a golden lion tamarin who's like his uh, his bodyguard this slim uh brilliantly golden furred monkey with like a a powerful rapier at her side just kind of watching, taking everything in. You see, um, well, actually, let's see what you guys are doing. Let's start with, uh, let's start with Finn. Sure. Your your troop is, you know, performing. They're doing a great job. What is what is Finn doing during this? Um, Finn um, is joining in a performance. Um, so <laughs> there's like three moves that I could do right now. Um, I mean, okay. <laughs> um oh, this is yeah, I mean this is this it. is what he does. I mean this is Yeah, this, he, this, this is his wheelhouse. Yeah. Um Yeah. So if I can, I would like to use my tools of the trade all eyes on me and quick fingers, quicker quicker eyes. Um so. <laughs> let's can we can we just do the one just in the interest of sure. time because that'd be like a lot of yeah, yeah. a lot of uh Okay. Um I guess I don't really need the tools of the trade. It's not entirely. right. I mean, I'll, I'll assume like you're doing a fantastic performance. I mean, you've okay. got yeah, sure. You've got um, like you know top-notch actors, great instruments for Yasmin. So okay, um, then I guess um, I'll just do quick fingers, quicker eyes, then to read the tense situation while while performing. Uh, all right, go for it. So with yeah, and with this move, I can always ask one question, even on a miss. Okay. Okay. Uh, I believe it's with cunning, right? Read a tense situation. Uh, read a tense situation is with cunning. Yes. Okay. Uh, great. Just eat out, eat out, eat out a ten. Nice. So, uh, gotta find the. There it is. Okay. While we're doing, where are these questions? All right. Oh, here we go. Okay. In there, three questions. Um, I guess what should I be on the lookout for? Hmm. Um. Okay. There is. Let's see. You do notice a few characters that look a little um suspicious, potentially dangerous or worrisome. You do spot the bloody Baron, Baron Druganov. He is this uh, this like battle scarred lynx. Uh, Jan, he's missing an ear, right? That your father took out of took off him. Yeah, just like one ear. You saw him last time in full battle armor, like riding on a caparisoned boar. Right now, he's wearing just a formal like doublet, um, you know, kind of checkered black and red. He still has his um, his like falchion, this curved or this kind of like broad flared sword at his side. And a bunch of other, uh, some of his like bat mercenaries, as well as the ice riders, 
are sort of hanging out with him in the, the Winterborn corner. Um, Semyon is there as well. And they're kind of keeping to themselves, having a few conversations with each other. Occasionally others will kind of pop in. So he's there. You also notice another figure that is looking a little suspicious or ill at ease. A very richly dressed beaver from the Gilded Guild who's wearing like uh, sort of like gold robes, um, various bits of like silver jewelry. Uh, he is He is like almost his fur has this kind of golden shine to it, like sort of a blonde uh, beaver. Um, you might recognize him. He is Gaspar Gores of the uh, the Gilded Guild, one of the more powerful bankers in town. Yeah, and these guys look a little out of place for sure. Hmm. Um. Okay, so that was big. Oh, that was um. What you been to look out for? So you can ask two other yes. questions. Um, why not? Who or what is the biggest threat? The biggest threat. Okay. Um, you do notice this place is pretty well guarded. There are like up on the second floor, there are a bunch of like raccoon uh, gangsters who work for Nux. But you can tell that they're just like kind of enjoying the party. They're not doing such a great job of security. So if there's some kind of a problem, they probably won't be ready. Hmm. Okay. Um. I mean, can I phrase what's the best way, like, through to the, to the um to our our destination uh yeah to the uh the clockwork device yes um you do notice there was like one room off to uh or actually you can see like as you're as you are looking this over like a, a side door is opening and a bunch of serving animals are bringing out an object like on a pedestal hmm. which like getting a lot of attention and you can clearly see like this is the one this is the device you're after okay yeah, and we'll we'll get back to that, but it's kind of in the open right now. It's being like brought out to be shown off. Great. Okay. Um, what is Yana doing? I was taking notes, but let's get to what I'm actually doing. Um, <laughs> okay. So Yana, number one, can Lady Olga be with her? Uh, sure. You can. She can okay. be your plus one. Sure. So basically, um, Yana sweeps into the ball wearing a ball gown that is light blue um, silk, um, but it is embroidered with various white snowflakes on the top. So it looks like it is uh, snowing. Right. Uh, and then also near the bottom, it's embroidered white again. So it, it's very much uh, looking like a snow out on the uh, tundra. Yeah, like the Winterborn colors. Mm -hmm. It's the Winterborn colors and the Winterborn symbol. Like, she's not... She's just yeah. throwing down Where, Wearing the flag, yeah. Yeah, she's basically wearing uh, a reinterpretation of the flag. Um, her, her slippers that she's wearing are crystal. And um, she's got the diadem perched up on her head or diadem. I never know really how to pronounce it. It's one of those words I see a lot and very rarely yeah. hear anybody say it. Rarely comes up in conversation. Right? It's like, oh, nice diadem you've got. We'll go with tiara for now because it's basically the same thing. Um, so she's got the the tiara that symbolizes her royal prestige, the tiara that her aunt has wanted to get for a long time. Also wearing frostbite the sword. So she is basically presenting yourself like hi true true heir to the winterborn throne here uh accompanied by because she knew she knew the bloody baron was here accompanied by his former second in command yeah he's like staring daggers at her mm -hmm. uh yana politely uh curtsies to him uh and then directs her attention up to the balcony where um mr nux currently is Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you going? Um, yeah. Nux looks down at you. He's clearly intrigued. Um, are you going to like approach him? 
Uh, she is going to do her best to approach him, and I would like to use the legacy move with him that she's got. Okay. Uh, which is when you meet someone important for the first time, mark your legacy track to take a plus 10 instead of rolling. Wow. Pretty cool. Yeah, she does that three times, and then somebody comes looking for her. Nice. Okay. But this seems like a very important time. Uh, she also has a move called Above It All, uh, which allows her to gain access as though she is a high-ranking faction leader of the Winterborn Dominion, and she gets to roll Charm instead of Cunning. Okay. Because it's basically tricking an NPC. She's not really that high rank, but she is coming in here as like, I am Grand Duchess Yana Winterborn, the true heir of the Winterborn throne. Like, this right. is this is what she is doing now. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Okay, so to meet someone important, this is one of the reputation moves, which you just got a plus 10 on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, do you want... Um, yeah, you're aware of their fact, their reputation. They're aware of yours. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, in fact, he's like, he sees you and he like, he gives you a, um, you know, he like beckons you up to the top. And she will go, cause she knows he's basically the richest guy in this city, right? Um, I mean, Mars. there probably are bankers that have, he, he's like, you know, he's, he rules the underworld. He has access to lots of money, but there are richer beasts. Sure. But if I was, say, looking to quickly arm a whole bunch of wolves, because I don't think it's reasonable to be like, so, Mom, can you make 40 swords today? Yeah, I see. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, she needs to arm her people, too, but she's got... She has 40 people to arm. Yeah, the underworld it's a might lot. be the... Right, okay. So, yeah, he, like, he beckons you to come closer. Yeah. So uh, she will um, come closer. Um, uh, yeah, like Artemisia kind of like slides in front, you know, protectively, but he's like, Artemisia, please. My apologies, Grand Duchess Yana. It's fine. I know that I, in the short time that people have known that I am alive, have gathered a bit of a reputation for violence. I do not. Not, to, not an undeserved one, I think. No. No, absolutely not. It's important for the nobles where I'm from to show that they have both military strength as well as strength of heart and strength of purpose. I do not plan to neglect the military. I think um, someone in my profession, the situation is often the same. Indeed. I can't imagine that when somebody neglects their duties to you that you can be easy upon them. Not at all. So, I do think that in many ways we are very similar, you and I. Um, he's like, well, I don't know if I would say that. I, I came up from, uh, from nothing. And now I have, I built an empire, I have a family. Um, Though I suppose you also, in your own way, started with nothing. Yes, when my aunt took over the palace during the Night of the Crystal Daggers, she did slaughter most others that would have uh, gotten in the way of her ascending the throne. Ah. My mother, being very clever, managed to get myself, my brother, and my father out of there. Um, we did spend... My formative years were spent running and pretending to be a little beggar girl. So, although I do have this royal birthright hovering above my head, I didn't spend a childhood any different than any other urchin moving town to town. Now it seems you want to claim that birthright. Now it is important that I claim this birthright. War is here. A war that shouldn't happen is here people in my country are starving suffering to ignore that pain would be a sin if there's something i can do to stop it hmm. he's like i also don't like the war it's bad for business indeed 
one of the first things, and I don't mean to get completely ahead of myself, it is going to be several bloody battles, but ones that I hope to drag over the line to the Winterborn Dominion as fast as I can. The war, having a war from within, I believe will stop this war that is encroaching upon your territory and making your business bad. Obviously, the Winterborn Dominion offers several things, uh, minerals, metals, um, shipping lanes not available to you. Hmm. And a war in the Winterborn Dominion is not good for this country either, but it is better than having a war in this country. And I would hope that this country remembers what I have done to remove the war from its shores. He's like, I think we've reached the part of the conversation where you ask me what you want. I want an army. Hmm. Or at least the money to raise one. Right. Not all of it has to come from you, but I believe that you have unique ways of fundraising. True enough. I've gotten where I am by trying to stay above politics. Providing services that, regardless of the politics of my customers. However, I respect your cause. And I think this could be a worthy investment. For a long time, I've wanted to make the Black Mask Gang, my organization, something more than the street gang that we started out as. So yes, I think that we can, I can start with funding. Uh, recruiting soldiers, mercenaries, I may have to leave that up to you. It's, I mean, the creatures besides Artemisia, who I don't know if I could spare her, uh, but the creatures that I often have, they do their killing uh, with a dagger on the back or a garrote around the neck. I'm not sure how useful they would be. But for funding, yes, I think I could, I think we could make some arrangements. The occasional assassination of the right person is not necessarily bad for my cause. He's like, oh, well, that is something that I understand. And Artemisia just like smiles very widely at that. I do not believe in the notion of ancient warfare that it should be two forces riding across a field from each other on horses. So modern times, it requires modern war, a sort of total war, if you will. Hmm. I do not see a reason to look down upon your profession, sir, as so many nobles have done in the past. Uh You've risen to a great status by being quite intelligent. I respect that. Yeah, Tomasz Nux, like, he really likes that. He, like, even kind of puffs himself up a little bit, wiggles his whiskers. He says, well, speaking of modernity, have a look at this, my latest purchase, one I'm justly, I would say, proud of. And down below, his servants have brought in this wonderful clockwork device. He's like, have a look at the ticking possum. And uh, Seamus, look over to you as you look at a, uh, a possum that is made out of like metal and wood. It is a, it is life size, so it's like looks you know it's your size, um, but it is like full of these like delicate clockwork mechanisms. It is like you know and it moves around. Um, you know its arms are like going up and waving. Its head kind of turns around. It's not it's not like a robot. Like you know it's built into something and someone has to control it kind of type in or you know work levers tell it what to do but like it is clearly an amazing automaton um tamash sucks nuck says my latest purchase ladies and gentlemen straight from the city of talk the city of wonders oh yeah <laughs> kind of like the the famous shitting duck of uh that we had in an earlier game this this the clock the ticking possum does not shit just let's be clear about that one um created by the engineer and alchemist uh flammarion himself i give you the ticking possum my my husband my husband ignatius he's a bit of an alchemist himself and he uh, he recommended this to me and uh truly ignatius i have to say next time pick something a little less expensive there's some fond laughter but everyone is definitely enjoying this this possum in the middle of the room um so seamus 
you're you're watching this thing and nan pops up next to you and she's like um eh, you're prettier eh, let's be honest nan neither of us are really dressed for this occasion i'm not even sure what to put on i feel uncomfortable out of me armor um she's like yeah i'll say so um well clean up all right hey that's yourself Ah, uh, thanks mate what? actually someone i uh someone i think you ought to meet might be some work for us hmm. well um I'm... she oh yeah go ahead i'm not adverse to work but hey michael can you tell me that clockwork possum is that what we're looking for here Yes, this is the clockwork device that Flammarion made. Hmm. If it can get some of me mates closer to that device, I'm up for any kind of work. Lead um, on that. Nan says, uh, I'm not sure about that, but let me let me introduce you to someone. Please. She leads you over to like the food tables and brings you to uh, Captain Chaser. Who is the captain of the Hounds of the Maze, the uh, the cop dogs who handle the maze, uh, the Motley Maze, the Pleasure District? Mm -hmm. um, and this guy was your like commanding officer. Uh, when we did our, our Hounds of the Maze one shot a couple weeks ago. All right. He is a um, a South American uh, bush dog, so he's like this really small. <laughs> kind of cute brown fur dog. He's like way shorter than you and uh, and man. Um, but he has this, you know, like thousand yard wary cop stare. He's just like, uh, you know, throwing back some um, some fine like schnapps he's watching and everything. And he's like, um, man, Seamus, I heard about you, Mr. Possum. Word is that when people fight you, they lose. Yeah, more or less. I let people talk. Gives my reputation a bit of a flag, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe you two would help me with something. I don't know if you've been uh, reading the papers, the broadsides, but we got a real problem in Katzenberg. A killer. You guys heard of the Grinner? The Grinner? Yeah. He's, uh... I don't know. We got, we're not sure what the word is for it. Somebody who just kills for the sake of killing and does it again and again, like in a sort of pattern, like a a repeat killer. Like it's serialized or something. Yeah, serialized. That's it. I don't know. I haven't seen anything like it. So <laughs> Giannis in a great message there. Um, he's like, we've been lucky so far. Uh, the Grinner has only picked off you know, urchins, beggars, people in Stench Trench mostly. And I mean, you, there's always a couple bodies that we sweep up in Stench Trench, but we find them, um, you know, uh, stabbing victims in bar fights, that kind of thing. But uh, like every so often now, we've kind of met maybe four or five, uh, their faces carved up, some nasty smiles. That's why, you know, some idiot in the press started calling it the Grinner. So far, he hasn't targeted anyone important, but it's only a matter of time until he moves out of Stan's trench, starts picking off someone, uh, someone that pays Hounds of the Maze money. I don't know. Usually, you'd be able to nab this guy real fast, but he's staying ahead. We think he might have some kind of help somewhere higher up. Is it anyone at this bowl by any chance that's helping him? Certainly, a lot of higher up folks, yeah. Yeah, and I don't trust any of them. I don't know, but keep your eyes peeled. Hey, but most certainly don't, especially on that clockwork monstrosity over there. James I know. Back to that possum. Can you believe that? Pretty soon they'll have all us uh, fighty types out of work, replace us with things like that. Eh, and a possum of all things. Should I be offended? Am I offended? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Um, Seamus, you do know that Flammarion himself is a possum, if that, if that helps. Okay, good. Still don't like it. 
but yeah it is like it's definitely in the uncanny valley it's like uh kind of opening and closing its mouth and you know its eyes are just going back and forth listen captain that serial killer that you were discussing the grinner the grinner certainly, yeah certainly a problem that me and the wardens can take care of at least attempt to but could you do me a favor in return yeah keep an eye on everything in this party if you could I'll do what I can. Maybe I'll send some of my uh, some of my dogs look around the corner, sniff around, see if they notice anything. I don't mind if you find someone else sneaking out the boat. All right, the part of me crew. I'm part of their crew. We never under never really understood myself. We're all working <laughs> together here. Right. Um. Okay. Let me check with uh, Kiva. What is Kiva doing? Well, <clears throat> Kiva's immediate thought was, upon seeing this thing being taken out from the back of, uh, you know, basically the kitchen, servants' quarters areas, that she wanted to basically sort of backtrack their steps to see where it was kept. Ooh, okay. So to try to sneak through the servants' area to where possibly a vault is, something that maybe is used to store a priceless artifact such as this. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so give me um, a stealth. Go ahead and roll stealth. You get uh, attempt to roguish feet stealth. Uh, that's an 8 on the dice plus 3 luck, so 11. Right, or sneak is the right word. I got, I got yeah. Dungeons and Dragons in the brain, of course. <laughs> um, what, so what did you get for the total roll? Uh, an 11. An 11, nice. Um... Yeah, you easily, like, you follow where this thing went. Um, you see it kind of goes down into a hall, uh, sort of, it goes around the length of the exterior of the casino. Um, you are walking past these very tall windows, and you see, uh, like, an entryway into a vault further down. Um, as you are doing this, Kiva, let me see. Uh, yeah, so you you come to the vault, which like you know probably some of the treasures have been kept. It is it is locked currently, and you are uh, alone in this hallway. Every urge in my body is to try to get in this vault, but I'm just gonna mark its location, sort of mentally, or mm -hmm. like maybe on a scrap of paper that I might have in my pocket, sort of. A vague general area to where this vault is. It's gonna hand it off to um, the the weasel and his crew can deal with it because we're just the fact finders. Right. Okay. So you mark it. Um, as you head back, actually, Kiva, I'm afraid something uh, bad is going to happen to you. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. Yeah. As you are walking through the shadows, first of all, a um, a garrot is thrust over your neck by some very strong hands choking you so you are not able to cry out and then a very sharp knife uh, a tonto or um you know like curved uh silent steel is just like thrust into your back going for a stab you are going to take two injury i'm going to spend one hold to soften that blow so you only take one Oh, nice. Yes, you only take. Okay, so you only take one. You like remember, you know, uh, Seamus's words about being on guard and you're, like, you tense up for a little bit. Everything. You never know when someone's gonna sneak behind you, you know, choke you out, and then stab you in the back. Right. Yes. And uh, you see, like, as this is going on, um, a bunch of other black-clad simian forms, <clears throat> like, kind of heading past you and hurrying into the halls. Uh. So we'll we'll cut back to you in a second as you're uh, trapped here. Everyone else can have some other problems. As one, every window in the Ringtail Casino shatters, just as well placed arrows and whistling darts cut apart candles and plunge the room into darkness. Then the figures swoop down on ropes, swinging short swords cut through the air as they fall upon the guards, striking with the sureness and lethality of expert assassins. You catch glimpses of black cloth covering white fur and red faces. Monkeys, snow monkeys, from the faraway island of Sakura. 
Rumors speak of these silent killers willing to murder and steal for the right price. Now it seems someone has paid it. Uh, so yeah, the room is trust in darkness. There is chaos. Seamus, um, you were a little bit alerted because some of the, the hounds in the maze, like, you know, bark out as they're coming in. So you're like ready to go. Uh, Finn, Yana, you are, I'm afraid, surprised everybody else. And then Kiva, you're being strangled and stabbed in the hall <laughs> across the way. So we'll, we'll check in with you. Um, but yeah, it's just like a full-on battle. It's in the dark. The guards, a lot of them were taken out by these ninjas. There are still some that are battling. The guests are freaking out, panicking. Some of the guests who have like able to brought weapons are drawing them and going to fight. And you do see a lot of these snow monkeys are headed like for the uh, the clockwork, the ticking possum itself. Um, so Seamus, you're the only one who isn't surprised. What do you do? Uh. Where is this, uh, Yana and Finn currently? Yana is up on the balcony with Nux, who is like freaking out. Finn is down below, uh, in the the first floor, still with the troop, who is like caught in mid performance. And I'm the only one close to the statue. Yeah. Well, the mission was to observe, and we can't very well observe it if it's stolen. Well, do I have my weapons? It's a good question. I don't, I mean, you came as a, you know, I'm going to say you don't. You showed up as part of disguise as one of the mendicant merrymakers. You wouldn't be reason to have a weapon. Um, Finn, do you think you guys would have like brought the weapons like with your equipment? I was just about to say, um, suggest that maybe we had it sort of stashed in among our stuff. Um, uh, yeah, you know, Seamus, I'm gonna say your weapons are with are like mixed in with the prop weapons. That uh, you know they were disguised as props that the uh, mendicant merry makers brought in. Well, gonna have to find it real quick. Captain, can you keep these ninjas? I can't believe I'm saying that ninjas. <laughs> but can you keep the ninjas distracted? Well, me and my friends get our weapons. He pulls out his, like, billy club, and he's like, I'll do what I can. Um, yes. Uh, uh, Nan also pulls out her sword and goes, like, back to back with you. Um, and it's like, Seamus, let's go get him. Right away. Seamus, mate, get your weapons. It's time. It's time. I'll give a quick signal to Yana and Finn. Hey, it's time. Okay, Seamus, you know what? I'm going to have you roll a trust fate <laughs> for the weapons, for weapon finding. Um, Make sure if you don't up. do this, something you're gonna get a prop. It's all right. I can still kill people with a prop. Uh, that's luck, right? Yes. So three. That's cocked. Landed on my keyboard. If you allow it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and reroll. Like, that's a two, three, two, two. That's a seven. Okay. It will cost you one exhaustion to get your axe. Otherwise, you're getting a prop axe, which look exact, which looks exactly like your real axe. I'm gonna spend that exhaustion. Right All on. right, you get your real axe. Aye. And uh, yeah, you're armed up, you're ready to go. You do see like Finn's weapons, except for the assassin's oud, which he has on him. I'm gonna say because that is disguised as an instrument. Mm -hmm. um, and Kiva's weapons are there too, but Kiva is nowhere to be found. <sighs> we'll check in with Kiva in a second. Uh, Yana. Hey, uh, if Yana can, Yana does draw her sword. Yes, because she sword. does have it with her. Totally. I am assuming between, um, between the balcony and the floor, there is a chandelier. But of course, <laughs> I want to swing on the chandelier. Yeah. From the chandelier. Um. Let's do it. So she's gonna basically take out the sword jump to the chandelier, kind of swing on that, get to the... Because the clockwork's quite big, isn't it? Yeah, it's the size of a possum. Great. Uh, get down to the floor, and uh, yeah, because the, the sword has been upgraded, she is going to, um, you know, storm a group. Nice. Um, um, but I guess first she needs to swing on the chandelier. Give me a trust fate for this one. I have acrobatics. Oh, right. Okay, perfect. Yes. Do head okay. roguish Pete acrobatics. Thank you. 
<laughs> I rolled double sixes. That is awesome. Oh, uh, so man. that's a 14 to swing from the chandelier, wow. as I previously this. said. Please describe this perfect chandelier, this perfect chandelier swing. Okay, so she pulls out the sword, looks back to the bodyguard of Nux, and is like, make sure he stays safe, will you? Then uh, just stands up on the edge of the balcony and just leaps, like, and the ball gown is, like, flowing behind her. She catches it with her hand, gets herself down to the ground safely, just wheels around with the sword and is ready to attack these people. Oh, man. And if I can, okay. I'd love to start attacking. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and take care of that. And I'm going to okay. say... Um... Lady Olga rushes to your defense. Like she brought her ceremonial sword, or, you know, ceremonial. Her sword is there too, you know, her long sword she's pulling out. So she's with you as well. Um, she could give oh, you and I guess I should note that Yana's barefoot at this point because she's certainly not going to fight in crystal heels. Oh, That's she it. kicked those things aside? She okay. kicked those things off immediately because it's like, y you don't want to fight wearing crystal high heels. That's, she, she probably would have glass in her feet right now if she had done so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Um, yeah, Yana, go ahead and roll. Um, are you just taking on one of them? Or are you going to storm? Oh no, I'm storming a group. You have storm a group. Okay. I I have storm. storm I have storm a group, and we upgraded the sword so it can do storm a group. Nice. Um, I'm gonna see you get a plus one because Olga's helping you with this. Nice. Okay, so that's rolling with my. I've not stormed a group before, so I need to double check what that does. Uh, uh, so, so you do have to mark exhaustion, and then you roll with might. Okay, it is marking exhaustion for storming a group. Why am I having such a hard time finding it? God, I'm just making dead air happen. Yeah, no okay. worries. It's in the weapon moves if you are. Uh... Great. I, I don't think I can count these people. Let me just see what clearing my exhaustion is from. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think I can keep view these people as having wronged me. So I, I don't no. get to instantly clear the exhaustion. I mean, they're, no, they're mercenaries who are trying to steal yeah. the taking process. All right, let's see how this goes. Okay, uh, that is a 10. I'll take it. Very good. Okay, so you're picking two options. Okay. Um. So let's see. I think I'm going to avoid their blows to the best of my ability. Okay. Because, you know... That makes sense. And because it is, I think because it is dark out and, you know, yeah, they're trained for this, but so is she. Yeah. Um, she is using them against each other. Uh, I will mark exhaustion again and they inflict their harms against themselves. Nice. Okay. Which I guess means, is it then redundant for me to take little harm? No, I think it just means like whatever harm um, they do, they, they, you take it and they take it. Right. But since I'm suffering little harm... Yes. You're going to take, Thanks. you normally would take uh, two, you're taking one instead. I'll take, I'll take that one injury. Um, there is something bad, though. They do have, um, they like, they're throwing some shuriken, one of which does hit you, and it does take, it does take an exhaustion. It's got some, like, poisoning goop in it that knocks one exhaustion out of you. Is there any way I could try to parry that so it doesn't hit me? Um... I'm afraid you are going to get by this. This thing that happens in okay. the back. Okay. I will mark exhaustion. an exhaustion. Yeah. Um, but yes, you and uh, Olga are just like fighting together. Like her sword is swinging up, blocking their uh, their like short uh, wakasashis. Apologies by getting the, the the blade of the ninja incorrect. Um, and then, like, how are you like hacking into them and avoiding their blows and making them hurt themselves? Uh, basically, it's like she's moving in such a limber way that they're not compensating for it well. Like, they're like, this is like, you know, a, a fancy lady in a ball gown. What the hell does she know about fighting? And so it's like, you know, they just, they kind of make bad decisions, like getting too close to each other to stab. And they like, she just ducks out of the way and they stab each other instead of her, you know, or just like somebody's about to bring down a, a, a sword or whatever they have on them, and she just kind of moves it with her sword so they slip it into the person next to them. Oh, man. Yeah, it is just like a Kill Bill kind of bloodbath. Swords swinging around. You're, like, blocking, dodging between them. These snow mm -hmm. monkeys, like, getting hacked up, spurts of blood growing across the floors. Everything goes crazy. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, you were, like, totally holding them off from reaching the ticking possum. 
Yeah. Um, let's check in with Finn and then back to Kiva, who is being suffocated and stabbed. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, I have no idea what what's happening to Kiva. Yeah, we'll, we'll okay. see. So in... It's fine. Don't worry about it. Well, when I read the tense situation, I did note that when they brought in the the possum, so could I, like, make a sort of knowing Kiva, I, I think she would she would follow follow the trail. Could I make that assumption? Oh, okay. Hmm. You know, give me a. You know what? I'll tell you what. Roll roll cunning. Sure. With a plus one because of the um, the read attempt situation, you get a plus one for acting on the answers, so that will count for this. So give an extra plus one for cunning roll. Okay, thirteen. Wow. Yeah, you definitely have an idea of where Kiva is. Okay. Um, I will um, basically shadow to Seamus. I'm gonna find Kiva and just dash towards the where I where I know she's going to be. Um, yeah, you dash out the back and you do see, like, Kiva being strangled <laughs> by one of these snow monkeys and, like, okay. being, um, you know, stabbed in the back with one of their knives. Um, there's a few more snow monkeys in the hall, too, like, spot you. They're kind of, like, rushing in to fight as well, sort of like a backup, uh, squadron. Gotcha. Um, so, as soon as I see that, I would like to do a quick shot with my, with my hood. Okay, use the assassin's hood for a quick shot. Uh, well, with luck. Okay. Straight eight. Nice. Okay, you get to pick one. Okay. Um. So you could not mark where. Um, avoid the exhaustion. Um, I'm gonna say that I I'm gonna move quickly and change change my position. Basically, basically firing the quick shot off at the the guy behind Kiva with the garrote, and basically I'm trying to to get him like to loosen the, the grip and as well as move moving closer. Oh yeah. Um yeah, you just like you fire the oud like takes him right in the eye like with that you know it's a pretty good decent roll. Um, he's like still up from, or no, he's, he's like the arrows in his brain. He's dead. <laughs> he's like, right. he is dropping down behind. However, Kiva, there's like two other of these, you know, ninjas in the hallway with you with their swords going up, uh, going for Finn and for you. Um, so you are now saved. You're still injured and like, but like you can, you fear, you know, the, the, the pressure on your throat is gone. You just like breathe again. Um, but you're still in super danger. What do you do? I have nothing, right? No weapons, no nothing. You do not. The weapons are back with the with the, uh, the Mer mendicant merrymakers. Is there a sconce on the wall? Some sort of torch? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I'm going to. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to improvise a weapon. I'm grabbing a torch. Nice. Okay, go ahead and roll uh, the improvised weapon. So roll with cunning for that one. Yeah, I rolled. I rolled a, a seven minus one six. Ooh. Uh, oh, could I, I can help. Oh, also, actually, I think Seamus has the uh, well, the whole. Yeah, but Seamus if I yeah. if I help, I give her a plus two instead of plus one. Okay. She's well, you, you, don't, you don't have to give me a plus. You can just choose to give me the plus one and then mark one exhaustion. I only need one. <laughs> oh, that's true. Is there any way we can make it a ten through the both of us? Maybe. <laughs> it's a six. You, you need plus so four. It'd be, yeah. Yeah. That, I don't think it's possible. You only have two. I don't think you should the... spend. I don't think you should spend all your hold to make this one thing work. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Well, well here's oh, one. one. Okay. So Finn, you're giving him the plus two. Uh. Well. Going from the six to an eight is yeah instead of a six a, to a seven. A six it's a seven, it's not much right, different. Yeah. So I'll just I'll just mark the one yeah. to get to get it to a seven. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah. Kiva. Uh. So yes, you make a torch. 
It's going to do, you know, like one harm. Um, it's flammable. It will set stuff on fire if you hit them with it. Yep. It will break after one move, though. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, can, can I... Um, can I exchange the flammable for Confused Senses? Uh, sure, I like that. Yeah, I mean, it's like shoving fire and sparks and stuff in their face. Yeah, basically, it's one of the like, hit, clock somebody over the head with it and then be able to make a break for it. Nice. Okay. Um. Yeah. Go ahead and roll confuse senses. So roll with finesse. That's better. That's a twelve. Not another die plus three. Oh man. Awesome. Um. Yeah. You just like grab this torch, swing it into the face of the nearest ninja. It like his you know um his mass like the cloth like goes up in flames. He like stumbles back you know trying to pat it out, and you were able to like dash your way down the hall. Uh, Finn, you going with him? Yes. Okay, as you go, a bunch of shuriken come hurtling after you. You each get hit for one exhaustion. Exhaustion? Uh, yes. They got some poison on them, so you get to lose one exhaustion. Okay, Seamus. You and, uh, Yana are now together in the center of the room around the ticking possum. Yana, like, took out a bunch of these ninjas, but there's still more of them coming in. Um, and right now, you and Nan are, like, fighting together uh, with with Yana and uh, Lady Olga. Hey, do I just have my axe, or do I have the shield as well? Oh, would you have brought the shield? I just bought um, it. What's that? I just bought it. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, you really want it, so maybe you convinced Finn, like, Let's bring this huge kite shield with us with the other Ben we'll... could carry it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, Seamus, you have the shield. Hey. Right. Well, Yana already took out about half of these bastards. We also got to perform, don't we, Nan? Nan's like, you said it, mate. Right. Um, I also have Stormer Group, so let's do that. All right, Nan will go with you and give you an extra plus one. Awesome. Storm group. Here we are. Mark exhaustion and roll with my. Where'd my dice go? Ah, there it is. That's a one. Okay. And that's a three. So four plus four, eight. Eight. Did you include? I include well, I will spend an extra exhaustion to get that up to a nine, and then I think you can use your thing to bump that up yeah. to a ten. And then nice. spend one. Hold. And because I helped you uh, attack villainous NPCs, we both clear our exhaustion now. Awesome. Oh, nice. Okay, exhaustion is cleared. So on a Which I'm plus gonna two. say she does by like noticing one of these guys picking up the shuriken and just like whipping it back at them. Totally. Okay, right. Seamus. Um, which ones are you picking here? Okay. I am going to use them against each other. I'm going to mark one exhaustion again. I, I dropped mm -hmm. my pencil. I'm just oh, going no to use the cap. There we go. Mark one exhaustion again, and they inflict their harm against themselves. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. You need to pick one more. You can... And I'm going to show them up. I'm going to inflict two morale harm on them. Nice. Okay, and you are going to take... Oh, yeah, go ahead. And if I had it... I know my axe is large and sharp, so I think I mark one exhaustion for large to do one additional harm. Oh, yeah. Oh, and man. then one wear on the axe to do another additional harm. Oh, my sure. God. That's like four harm. And I am also... I also have Ironhide. Also, I have Ironhide. When a group inflicts harm on you, suffer two fear harm from each attack, minimum one harm, and when you inflict harm on a group, it inflict one additional harm. Five. Oh my god. So um, okay, five. so you don't take any harm. <laughs> you take zero harm, and you just, like, totally massacre these ninjas. You and Nan are just cleaving through them in this, like, tornado of carnage. Um, you got Yana is like, you know, cra uh, uh, hitting the shuriken out of the air before they can reach you. Yeah, it's um, a triple team. Yeah. Well, I guess quadruple because you have Lady Olga there too. Lady Olga's, yeah. 
right. not Nan Nan Nevers is like spinning around this like terrible tornado of uh, of carnage. And um, Seamus, how are you like just massacring these ninjas? Huh? Well, they can't and really fight up front. They're more sneaky guys. Yeah. I say. So Seamus is going to take his new shield and just beat the crap out of them. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you were just like slamming the King of Kite shields. These snow monkey ninjas are going flying, crashing into the tables. Uh, it is pure carnage. Um, Yana. Uh, so all the ones in the middle are dead and uh, we we'll go to your turn just as Kiva and Finn come in being pursued by two of like the last uh, ninjas. The other few that are in the room or in the, uh, or in the casino are already like running away, but these two are chasing after Kiva and Finn. Okay. She is going to move to intercept them. Um, Really, really cleaving close to Kiva because Kiva is, uh, you know, she's the protector of Kiva and she does take that seriously. Okay. Um, because it was one of the last things that uh, Tixie ever did. I say his name right, Tixie the Coyote? It's, it's Teehee, like the Teehee. last. Teehee. Yeah. It was one of the uh, Last things Teehee asked her to do before she totally lost track of Teehee. I'm not saying Teehee's dead. She just doesn't know where he is. Yeah, Teehee um, was like fading into the background. Yeah, he's just, you know, he's that kind of guy. But she's going to launch herself at one of these uh, ninjas, whichever one is coming at Kiva. And she is going to do engage in melee. Okay, go for it. With them. She like rushes in all bloody. Now it looks like she's wearing a dress that's like, uh, snowflakes falling on bloody snow. Oh, yeah, totally. Well, that was a really bad roll. Ooh. Uh, uh yeah. I got a six. One hold. You get a plus one. Okay. okay. Seven. All right. So I've got a what seven on engage in melee, uh, which I think means I get to pick one. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'll I'll inflict serious harm. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Let's go. We're gonna we're gonna bounce over to Finn next. Um, but yeah, you just like you do take out this ninja, but you are taking um, two injuries and one exhaustion. Very very bad. Almost yeah, as bad as I can roll. You still uh, so, totally like how how do you kill this guy? Uh, two injuries and one exhaustion. Yeah. Uh, basically, this guy's running and is about to stab Kiva with um whatever weapon they're using yeah Yana just kind of kind of katana type thing yeah Yana just kind of moves in to just have it hit her uh and as part of her gesture just takes uh takes frostbite and swoops his head off oh man yeah monkey monkey head goes sailing through the air right he just like collapses huge spray of blood from the neck oh yeah i mean it's like total anime silhouette thing you know, oh, yeah. where there's, like, the huge spray of blood from the neck, but there's also the huge spray of blood from her torso. Yeah. Oof. Because she is, she's getting pretty badly injured. Hooray for, for having six injury boxes, by the way, because I've marked three of them. Oh, man. Well, she's fighting uh, in a ball gown. Yeah. I know. You cannot bring your armor to the ball. Oof. Mm -mm. Okay, Finn. There's one yes. left who's chasing after you and Kiva. So, um, as... As we're running, um, I am going to signal to Terra, my tarantula, to um, to because uh, I I read up on on my new tarantula and yeah. she can uh, use her webs to to trap a foe. So, so I basically, as we're running, I'm I'm just like. Tara, I need a trap, and and she will trap the the simian. Ooh, okay. Um, go ahead and roll. Let's see. Let's do a trust fate with this one. Okay. You're trying to take him alive, is right? Mm, sure. Okay. I mean, you don't you don't have to. Just at, at the very least, I want to slow him down. Okay. Uh, just barely seven. A seven. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Tara like leaps over from your shoulders, 
creates like a cool um, kind of net uh, tripwire of, uh, of webbing. This monkey like dashes into it, collapses, legs get all tangled up, and falls to the ground. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna say that like interrogation of this is not gonna be possible okay. because it like um, the snow monkey lands at the feet of actually the bloody baron and like looks up. And then suddenly the Bloody Baron's Falcon just swings down, catches the monkey, like, right in the skull, killing him instantly. Okay. It's like, well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> He's like, that is the only way to do it. Yana, Grand Duchess, and he, like, pulls his sword out. He looks over you and he's like, you did well. As did you, sir. Better than your father. <laughs> Indeed. I did not have my arms held behind my back, though, either. <laughs> and he starts, like, um, kind of heading back to join his friends. Um, as he's doing this, though, like, everybody's kind of recovering. Ninjas are dead. Kicking Possum is safe. People are starting to, you know, kind of um, recover, catch their breath. Um... You know, if the guards are helping any wounded uh, guards get some uh, get some help or like, you know, so a lot of them were unfortunately killed by these uh, these snow monkey ninjas, just like assassinated. Um, then there is a terrible raccoon squeal coming from the second floor. Um, you guys look up and you see another raccoon, uh, an albino, rushing out to Tomash, like into his arms and like hugging him, and he's like. Tomash, Tomash, he, he took him, he took him. Um, Tomash is like, Ignatius, calm down, what what happened? Um, and he's like, Theo, Theophilius, he's gone. Um, and he's holding out a, uh, a note. It says, this was left in your office. Um, Tomash is like, he just like grabs it. He's like showing his teeth. You've never, I mean, he didn't lose his, He's not known for losing his temper, but he's lost it now, um, as well as just, like, a wave of grief. Um, and he's like, my son should have been safe. In my building, in my city, he should have been safe. Um, he holds up this note, which says, uh, your son's life for the ticking possum. And it is signed with just an ink outline of a smile. Nux throws this down to um, to Captain uh, to Captain Chaser, and he's like, "This monster has stolen my son. Do your fucking job. Save him." And anybody who ever can rescue my son, they will have my undying gratitude. They can have the ticking possum. I don't care. Protect my cub. You can have that, you're saying. Sure. It's a it's a piece of clockwork junk. I don't give a doesn't matter. I want my boy back. Hey. Well, find your son, Mr. Nux. Now I'll bring you the head of the one that took him. That's my promise to you. Um, yeah, he, he, like, gives you a solemn nod. And then he goes, and you can tell, like, he's also, even though he's, like, full of rage, he's, like, barely holding back tears himself. And he, you know, just continues to embrace his husband, trying to comfort Ignatius, even though he's also falling apart. Um, okay, so, Captain Fletcher, like, you know, motions you guys outside. More more guards rushing in. The place is becoming, you know, totally secure. Uh, the ringtail ball is pretty much over at this point. Um, Nicholas Ratcage is like, well, I, I don't know. Finn, you think they like the show? You know, before the ninjas attack? Wonderful performance, as always. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I thought it was pretty good. I don't know if we're gonna, the critics are going to get much review. Uh, oh, Kiva? What if next time, your next performance, have ninjas suddenly jump in next time? Because it was pretty cool. Now that is a genius idea. 
this is quite a story to tell. Uh, just he's like, like yeah, know. we could do, you know, like maybe I could be, hey, you know, maybe like I could play myself. You could play yourself. I wouldn't even need, I wouldn't like have to do method acting. I know how to be me. <laughs> that is a fair point. Yes. This is a tale of daring do and And, uh, oh, jeez. Player is lost for words. Uh, yeah, daring. Jay definitely got some daring. I would say. Daring do? Keep and helping a daring do. Of course. And, of course, uh, rising above the, above the odds, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, Nan, Nan never says, let's just make sure it's got a happy ending, mates. I bet it is. Of course, this story is not done. Onward. Yeah, so you go outside. Oh, uh, Yana? Um, no, she's she's following. She's. It does look like there's a bloody moon on her sh on her gown now, as the blood stain continues to grow. But you know, right? You um, should okay, get so... you taking a look at them. Uh, so, Captain, she... rather Captain... stabbed. Ooh. Yeah, that was a vicious fight. We're probably all covered in blood. No, I th I think we need to take her to someone now. I. I've seen her injured. This is far worse. Okay. I'm fine. Let's go get the child. Nope, nope, nope. We're nope. doing good. No, it's fine. Uh, uh, is one of the guards the sign nearby? Of blood loss. Um, yeah, there's some there's guards and like other guests are still milling around. Uh, guard, I'm not, you know I'm what, not, you know I'm not tired. I'm just bleeding. We'll go. Guard, do you know where the nearest doctor is? Um, he says. Uh, we're, we're in the Motley Ray's maze right now. He's like, uh, there's an apothecary in this hour. I don't know if they're I open, need, though. I need a surgeon. Uh, a barber surgeon. There may be some in the uh, the Moss Market in the, the next uh, the next district over. But Just get me some thread and needle. I will stitch it up myself. Okay. Um, Yana, go ahead and roll Trust Fate to stitch it up yourself. <laughs> to sew up your own wounds. Hey, I mean, I was just talking crap, but <laughs> she'll try. Work that needle. Yeah, she doesn't know what she's doing. That's a six. Uh, can I assist? Yeah. Uh, yeah, mark exhaustion. Yana, you get one injury back. I'm basically, as soon as I see you doing this, I'm like, you're being dumb. I grab a, I grab a torch and... <laughs> oh, man. Autorize her sewn up wound. It hurts, but it's probably the better thing to do. You need to see a doctor. Especially after that. Oh, it's oh, fine. God. Fire kills things. Wow. Also, you, can uh... you badly singe my pretty white fur? Yeah, well... It's the least of your troubles right now. It'll grow back. If you die, you don't. Right. Uh, yeah, but we do it. have to find Ta Tomash's child. Time. Yes. Hey. Time um, is wasting. Yes, uh, it's uh, the, the the boy's name is uh, Theo Theophilius or Theonux. Uh, Seamus. Is there any way I can rouse my squirrels to like search the area for the little lad? Um. Yeah, yeah. You go ahead. Um, I mean, they're actually. I don't think they came with you. They're probably still in Shack Shore in the boat. Or, you know, like, um, you know, camp somewhere nearby. Right. So they can't search the area. It would take them too long to get here. You could send a messenger to have them meet you in um, a stench trench, though. It's close enough. Okay, they'll meet you there. Let me check in with Yana. Was Semyon at the fault? Yes. She's going to go get Semyon. Ooh, okay. Um, yeah, you find him and, like, some of the other guests are leaving... He's kind of apart from the rest of the Winterborn delegation. Sammy, you heard about that child being stolen. If there's anything that I believe, it's that you are the right creature to find a child from the air. Are you not? He says, I'm fairly good at finding just about anything from the air. You would have me look for this missing raccoon? Yes, if you can find where he is, and then find me. Take me to his location. I'd be very appreciative of that old friend. 
he's like, I think I can do so, but uh, be aware. There's a roof over his head. I cannot see him. And then he's like, Yana, I hear you are working with Septimius von Stahl. Is that right? If you know of information about him that means I should not work with him, I would love to hear it. I wouldn't presume to tell you your business, but I will say he is a cunning and ruthless animal. His goals may even be good for the Dark Forest, but he will stop at nothing to see them accomplished. Be careful. I would say that I am, but she looks at her wound. Clearly I am not. <laughs> yes. Well, I will take to the air. I'll find you if I can find anything. I very much appreciate this, friend. He spreads his silent wings and flaps away into the night sky. That's I couldn't remember what they were called. It's silent wings. Okay. Yeah, the you. silent wings. No worries. All right. So, um, Captain Shaster goes over to you guys and he says, "All right. So, looking for the Grinner. Hopefully, you'll have more luck than I did. Uh, all the victims have been in Stench Trench, so he's probably somewhere over there. Maybe you can find some witnesses or something. Uh, the latest one was a Prairie Dog pickpocket, and he gives you the address of where the pickpocket's body was found." So, head over there, see what you can find. All right. Um, so with that, we'll cut ahead. Oh yeah, Seamus? We should probably grab the rest of our gear. Oh, absolutely. The rest of my gear is at my mother's place. It is, it's actually on the way to Stan's Trench. That's between the Motley Maze and uh, the Moss Market is between the Motley Maze and Stan's Trench. Well, right. she would just love to have her chain mail on again. I was going to yeah, say, I'm going to try to sneak it up into the, the house and grab it. For sure. Let me get my chain mail as well. Make sure nice. you're not using a prop. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, it's way too heavy to be the prop chain mail from the mendicant. Because no I'm feeling like I'm not going to get to heal two more injury before we get to do this, so. No, you're you're there in the stench trench. Like, you know, this, you know the Grinner, like, um, he captures and he kills pretty quickly. I mean, this is a hostage situation, though, so who knows? Or so he says. But, I mean, also, for all you know, the boy's dead already. Yana is, because she's she's a canine, she is panting because she's in pain. Ooh. All right. So you're panting. You guys, um, you go there on foot. It, by now, it's, like, late night, getting close to the middle of the night. You get kind of, uh, there's a half sliver of moon up above, a little bit of mist. It's cold. The winter, like, winter is, um, winter is coming. No, can't say that one. Winter is, winter is almost there. Like, you're in, you know, this is the early December kind of time. So, yeah, w winter is here. Winter is here. Um, you are kind of walking around, like, through this, the stench trench is just this, like, miserable, um, slum lots of like tumble down uh hovels just shoved together rickety buildings muddy gutters oh yeah not wearing the diadem anymore got it uh there's like some old tanneries used to be here so the place stinks that's how it's got its name uh the stench trench and um there's definitely like the you know the creatures that stay out at night are lurking around here so there could be some witnesses you're you're there in the alley where this poor prairie dog pickpocket was found. Uh, what are you guys doing? Well, at least the lovely smell of this neighborhood is distracting me from my pain. Right I don't know why they call it stench trench. It's really nice smelling. <laughs> I'm going to find that source of that smell, and I'm going to roll around in it. You probably shouldn't do that with an open wound. Right? It's also it's also tanning fluids. It's not really. It's pretty caustic. Fair, fair. Okay. Well, shall we look around, see if there's any clues left over? Hey, Edmund Squirrels get a message to meet us here. Don't know if any of them have shown up yet. And Semyon is somewhere up in the sky. So we got the place well looked after, well observed. Now we just need a clue on where to go. Do you know if the crow's nests are based out of Stan's Trench, or are they based out of some other part of the town? Um, they are based out of Stan's Trench, yes. 
Uh, I'm gonna go find their hideout and see if they've seen anything. Right. Okay. Cool. Um. I throw. The, I don the the crow head. And then... Nice. Okay, you're masked. Let's have. Um. Okay, Seamus. You have your your squirrels like um, Magnus and the other squirrel foresters are there. They are like kind of climbing around the buildings, like peering into the alleys. Um, are you guys like splitting up? Like, Heave, are you leaving the group to go talk to the the crows? Yes, because I assume their hide the hideout is hidden. Right. Okay. So, Kiva, yeah, you're you're a part. You know where the hideout is. Yeah. Are the rest of you guys sticking with Seamus? Um, if Kiva doesn't want. Uh, Yana to accompany Kiva, then Yana will not accompany Kiva. Otherwise, Yana is going with Kiva, but um, up to Kiva. Yana, if you could stay back, this is kind of really business. like it's yeah. They don't like their hideout getting getting known. It's kind of. I understand. I just care very deeply about protecting you, Kiva. I, Protect be, yourself. Be safe. I will. Hey, the last knows what she's doing. Usually. And I just dash uh, chopping. <laughs> well, at least I have yeah. my armor again now, so I can absorb some of that damage into it rather than myself. Mm. Uh. All right. So, uh, Seamus, Yana, and Finn, you guys are like, you know, kind of there in this alley. Um, Magnus like leans down from the rooftop and gives like a quick whistle. And he's like, um, boss, there's a uh, picked up a follower. Coming down that alley there. He'll be here soon. Bit hard to miss. Hostile, but friendly. Looks pretty hostile to me, sir. Oh, and, like, as you stare down there, you see uh, Shinder Swan. That swan uh, pirate who you battled before comes, like, waddling his way out of the alley, being like, Seamus. I mean, this is. Seamus Opossum. Now I find you. Uh, well, not alone. But maybe now the tables have turned, yeah? Listen, just, now is not the time for this. If I may, Shinder Swan, whatever yeah. gripe you have against Seamus or Possum can be settled at dawn with pistols or daggers. At the moment, we're looking for a child who's gone missing. If you do not want the blood of a child on your head, why don't you scamper off and sober up? I don't have time to waste on you. Ooh. All right, we will check back with the Shinder Swan business. Um, Kiva, you head over to the nest, you meet Anna Sabalski, the, the squirrel urchin there, and she says, um, she's like, she kind of comes out of the nest and she's like, um, uh, Kiva, you do realize you're being followed, right? I have not noticed that. I was... She's like, take a look, uh, behind you. Do I, uh, I look back, do I see anything? You do see in the alley a pair of, like, glowing, luminous eyes watching you. That's fine. I turn back to, uh, the squirrel. We're looking for the, the Grinner, something like that. Oh. Well, you, uh, you certainly know how to, how to pick them, huh? We're trying to find another child who's gone missing. We're trying to find a child who's gone missing. Ooh. Yeah, they say when the Grinner gets you, you smile one final time, and then you never smile again. Well, they're asking for a ransom, so this might not necessarily be the situation. Could be different. Um, oh, yeah, no, no problem, Seamus. Um, Have you seen anything? Heard anything? She's like, actually, there has been somebody else asking after the Grinner. And she might know something. And as she's saying this, the, um, those two glowing eyes come a little closer. And you see a, uh, an eye-eye, one of those you know, spindly-looking creatures, like with the big one extra large finger on their hands, those huge eyes. She is wearing like... Um, you know, like a long, uh, long cloak has sort of a, a broad brim hat, like pushed low to like shade those those glowing eyes of hers. And she says, like, um, you're uh, heard about you. You're keeping the crow, right? That mask. 
I shouldn't have to ask. I remain silent. My hand, I, my hand though, underneath the cloak, goes to the pistol. My name's easy there. We're after the same game. My name is Cassandra Candle. I'm a thief taker for hire, a private eye eye. You're looking for the Grinner. Yes, it's a matter of urgency. Right. Well, I think all of us are looking in the wrong place. See, from what I understand, the kills the Grinner does here, those are just to blow off steam. He really does uh, his real work. He's an assassin for hire. Which means somebody paid him to uh, snatch the Nux boy. Along with various other kills he's made. Somebody with a lot of money. And it makes sense. Um, Anna, tell him what you told me. And she says, well, okay. I mean, I don't know how true it is. But I've heard from some of, uh, you know, friends. Friend of a friend kind of thing. That they've seen a, a shadowy, spiky figure who was seen with some of these victims of the Grinner in the company of someone else, a beaver with golden fur. Right. And with that, which I think Finn actually knows who, who we're referring to, the beaver banker, Gaspar Gores, that is where we're going to bring this episode to a close. Uh, we will pick up next time with a conclusion to this mystery hunting down a uh, one, of, one of many, perhaps, Katzenberg killers. But let's go ahead and do the experience, and then we'll bring this episode to a close here. Uh, and then next time, the mystery will be solved. Well, Did I get Shinderskwan to go away, or is that going to resolve next time? Uh, I think we should resolve it next time, because... Okay, okay. Might be a conversation, Seamus. I want to like punch him or something. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hold that one till next time. Okay. Um, she just wants him to get to go away because it's like you're wasting our time. Yeah, that is a good point. Time is a yes. Again, Seamus is like, hey, it's my old friend who I keep messing with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a really toxic friendship. Wow. Uh, no, I love it. All right, let's go ahead and do the experience kind of the opposite way that we did the introduction. So starting with Seamus, do we get any uh, any drives fulfilled this game? All right, chaos. Advance when you topple tyrannical or dangerously overbearing figure or order. We did kill a lot of ninjas. I'm not sure if a tyrannical or overbearing figure was destroyed, though. But an order of ninjas. <laughs> That's true. Uh -huh. Um, I don't know. They were Damn. a lot of them were killed. I, 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 the, the, the bubbling spring clan, which is their group. I don't think it was totally destroyed. So I, you're, yeah, well. you're pressing hard. What's, what's the next one though? That's right. Agreed. Uh, Advance when you secure a serious payday or treasure. We do find the kid. We get paid in that golden statue. That is true. Yes, I think that's gonna be for next time though. You're definitely gonna get that, and you might get the other one next time too. Oh yeah, well. I tried. Ah, it's okay. It happens. Sometimes you don't get the advancements, but it's coming up. Um, Finn. Okay. Uh, discovery events when you encounter a new wonder, ruin, or, or ruin in the forest. Probably not. Yeah, I'm afraid not that, that one. Uh, next one is thrills. Events when you escape from certain death or incarceration. Uh, yes. Running from those ninjas, certain death. Yep. Get one advancement there. Ooh. All right, uh, Kiva. Um, I definitely don't get the chaos, you know, uh, top lights, radical over rank figure. Um, but I think I, I definitely think I get, get thrills for the, uh, the the daring escape from certain death. Oh yes, yeah, you were being choked out and stabbed, and you survived. So yes, could have been an there. Could have been so bad. I have no armor and I have no might. <laughs> Ooh. Well, yeah. Thankfully, Thank you, Finn. friends bailed you out there. Yeah, been. Finn came in clutch with that uh, that crossbow shot. Um, oh, Yana. I chop liver. Huh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Yana thanks, saved Yana. him too, of course, as well. Belt you saved twice. But but Not Yana, prepared. like I was, you, you didn't know where I was. I could have died that way. Then. Well, then when I saw you, I helped. No, you. Of I got you stabbed did. a yeah. lot. I'm you bleeding did. a lot of blood. 
<laughs> well, not Imori. <laughs> we burned well, the wound, if you remember it. correctly. Ah. <laughs> uh, well, she still has two injury. So. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, nobody's getting chaos. Uh, revenge, advance when I cause significant harm to my foe or their interests. I don't know if what she did at the ball was enough for that. It's kind of a mystery at this moment for me. Oh, I think so. You definitely made a friendship with Nux. And I think if you save his son, it will only increase, so. Okay, so can I mark revenge? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Because I'm like, I wasn't sure if that was a for next time or if I've already done enough groundwork that I've already messed up Winterborn interest pretty bad, so. Um, yeah, I would say you can get it for this time and for next time. Woo! She, try she tried to have a whole adventure of using her words, Michael, but people attacked us. No, no, you just, I, I never, I never set a, um, words only rule for this game. Don't worry. Um, you know, I thought it was, it's cool to, I mean, you can't have a fancy party without like ninjas attacking. It's like a, yeah. you gotta do it. They have to show up. Um, all right. Well, that brings this episode of the dark forest to a close next week will be the conclusion of the Katzenberg arc. Sweet. Uh, episode, I think I'm going to entitle Katzenberg City Shuffle. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't even... Yeah, I want to know. So I'm going to be tuning in for sure. I'm right here. So uh, thank you so much. Thanks for everybody that was watching. Uh, thanks for hopping in and saying hi um, as a lurker or as somebody that was watching the whole show. Thanks, Londell, for hopping in and saying respect for North Sack. Um, so uh, thank you so much, uh, Gray Mouse, for hanging out in there um, and keeping us on track and keeping us enter entertained. Or did we entertain you? I think you entertain us just uh, as much, I realistically. Yeah, I think we're it's, it's pretty equal right now. It's just pretty funny. So um, keep watching. We have one more episode of this arc. And then we're going to move on to other things, too. Um, probably continue this story a little bit further. Um, but stay tuned for more news on that. But until next Tuesday, pull up a chair and make, make time for tabletop. Tabletop. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.